Hi, my name is Nadine Price. I'm Care Pathway Lead for Acute Podiatry at Whips Cross Hospital in North East London. And today I'd like to present you with a brief overview of an article I've recently published in Diagnostics. As a podiatrist working within the National Health Service in the UK, I treat foot ulceration on a daily basis. These wounds put a substantial economic strain on the healthcare system. The NHS spends almost £970 million a year for the treatment of these ulcers and any related amputations. Much of this cost is driven by wound healing time. So the longer a wound is open, the more resources are required to manage the wound. And as clinicians, we'll often use antimicrobials and antibiotics to manage bacterial burden and infection. But it's widely recognised that these are often overutilised. So clinical advice, uh, guidance advise that the selection of antimicrobials should be based on the assessment of clinical signs and symptoms of wound infection. These include the typical redness, heat and swelling that may be present in an infected wound. However, the signs and symptoms are not always obvious in a wound, making antimicrobial selection more of a challenge. So we know that more objective methods of detecting high bacterial loading wounds are needed. To aid in the diagnosis of bacterial loading wounds, our team at Whips Cross Hospital have recently implemented a point of care fluorescence imaging procedure using the molecular fluorescence imaging device. This device shines a safe violet light on wounds that cause bacteria at significant loads to produce a red or cyan fluorescent signal. This non-invasive imaging procedure provides us with an immediate information on wound bioburden and can be used to guide the selection of antimicrobials and antibiotics. In the study, I aim to better understand the impact of fluorescence imaging on both clinical outcomes and potential cost savings. As antimicrobial dressings represented our highest cost burden, I first wanted to evaluate how the addition of fluorescence imaging to our standard wound assessment would impact our use of antimicrobial dressings. I also wanted to understand the impact of fluorescence imaging on wound outcomes. And so to do this, I assessed the 12 week wound healing rates. To evaluate the impact of fluorescence imaging procedure, I conducted a retrospective observational pre and post intervention analysis. For the analysis, I compared anti antimicrobial prescription and wound healing data from two time periods. The first time period, which is referred to as year one, includes information collected prior to the implementation of the fluorescence imaging procedure. The second time period, year two, includes information collected after fluorescence imaging was added to our routine clinical assessment. All patients who visited the clinic between April 2018 and March 2020 were included, except those who attended for non-wound reasons such as Charcot monitoring. Patient demographic data was also collected and the antimicrobial dressings included in the analysis were either silver or iodine based. There were no new antimicrobials added to the formulary over the two year period. This table describes the criteria for using fluorescence imaging. So we have suspected soft tissue infection, any non-healing or static wound, and by that I mean those at present for more than four weeks duration, guiding tissue sampling for microbiology, monitoring the progress of a wound following the application of a particular dressing or start of antibiotics, and then comparing those images with those taken at previous visits, and for any new ulceration as a baseline. And this decision tree describes how we use the fluorescence imaging information to guide our wound care. So we first take our picture, and the presence of any red or slime fluorescence indicating a moderate to heavy bacterial load after our initial debridement will then prompt additional debridement or wound sampling as needed. The fluorescence information informs dressing selection and antibiotics are prescribed only if indicated from sampling results, which are usually available within two to three days, except in cases where there are other clear signs or symptoms of infection present. In this slide, you can see an example of the images captured with the fluorescence imaging device. This is a young male with type 1 diabetes who developed an ulcer on his left foot. Fluorescence imaging showed bright red fluorescence indicating an elevated bacterial burden around the edges of the wound. A tissue sample was taken from the region of red fluorescence and this confirmed the presence of multiple wound pathogens. To make sure our patient population was consistent across both years, we compared some basic demographic information. Most of our patients had diabetes and the majority of our patients were male. The results show that the age and proportion of male to female patients was fairly consistent between the year prior to fluorescence imaging and the year after we incorporated it into our routine wound assessment. Interestingly, there was a 27% increase in the number of wounds seen in the clinic in the year where fluorescence imaging was used, and we also saw a slight increase in the number of patients themselves. So next, I assess the impact of fluorescence imaging on wound outcomes and expenditure. In the year prior to using Moleculite, 85% of patients were prescribed antimicrobial dressings and two thirds were prescribed antibiotics. In addition to this, we observed wound healing rates of 39% and an amputation rate of 18%. In 
in the year after fluorescence imaging was incorporated in routine wound assessment, we saw a 49% decrease in antimicrobial dressing prescriptions, along with a 33% decrease in antibiotic prescriptions. This reduction in antimicrobial use coincided with a 23% improvement in the wound healing rate, and the amputation rate in year two remained comparable to year one. Before the fluorescence imaging procedure was introduced into the clinic, the total antimicrobial dressing expenditure per year was about £2,300. In the 12 months after fluorescence imaging was introduced, the total antimicrobial dressing expenditure decreased by 33% to £1,531. This decrease occurred despite a 27% increase in the number of wounds seen in year two. To account for the difference in the number of wounds treated over the two-year period, antimicrobial spending was normalised to the total number of wounds assessed. Per wound, antimicrobial spending fell by 47% from £22.68 to £11.96. Wound healing rates are impacted by many factors that contribute to the total cost of treating foot ulcers. To estimate the impact of routine fluorescence imaging on the total annual wound care costs per patient, I applied the healing rates observed in year one and year two to the known cost of wound care reported in the 2018 study by Guest et al. In their retrospective analysis, Guest and colleagues analysed data from 130 diabetic foot ulcers across the NHS to determine the average cost of care for a foot wound over a 12 month period. The average cost of treating a healed foot ulcer was £2,138. The cost of treating an unhealed foot ulcer was four times as high while the cost of treating a foot ulcer resulting in amputation was almost £17,000. These varying costs were multiplied by the healing and amputation rate data we observed in year one and year two. The total cost of wound care based on standard care alone was estimated to be around £7,662. The incorporation of fluorescence imaging in year two was associated with a 23% increase in wound healing rate which estimated to a total cost of £6,900. The 23% increase in wound healing observed in year two amounted to an estimated cost of £762 per patient. So in conclusion, the results of this retrospective observational analysis showed that the routine use of fluorescence imaging for the identification of high bacterial burden in wounds is a useful diagnostic procedure. It can be associated with a reduction in antimicrobial dressings and antimicrobial prescriptions, improved wound healing rates, and the improved detection of high bacterial loads in wounds, which reduces the clinical and economic burden to our patients and the NHS. Having the ability to know at the point of care whether a wound has significant levels of bacteria enables us to offer the safest care for our patients and provides instant feedback on treatment efficacy.